Okay, let's move on. 51-year-old Hispanic uh, male presents with gross hematuria. Uh, he's got a past medical history significant for diabetes, hypertension, gout, and kidney stones. He has a past surgical history only significant for fixing an inguinal hernia. He takes metformin for his diabetes, lisinopril, and sertraline for his uh, blood pressure, and simvastatin for his hypercholesterolemia. His mother, his father, and his brother all had kidney cancer. And his father died from metastatic disease. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he has two kids. His chest x-ray, or sorry, CT chest is negative and his labs are within normal limits. Now you can see here he's got this very, very large tumor involving his right kidney. And in addition, he has a smaller tumor involving his left kidney. Here's another view. <coughs> Again, large tumor involving the right kidney, small tumor involving the left kidney. Here's a coronal view. While you guys not, are not looking small, at that. Smaller. Yeah. Smaller. <laughs> smaller. That's, smaller. That's still a big tumor. You Just so here. you don't think Dr. Wood is saying that it grosses him out, um, but the, the gross is a term we use in terms of visible, meaning you don't need micro. So I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with that terminology. Plus it grosses me out. <laughs> he's, he's not saying he's grossed out by it. All right. So let's see, Dr. Chapin, this patient comes to you. So large tumor, right kidney, smaller tumor, left kidney, no metastatic disease. Mother, father, brother have had kidney cancer. Father died of kidney cancer. What are you going to do? I think based on the, the size of the right tumor and the risk for that becoming metastatic or the source of metastases, I would probably do the right kidney first, uh, followed by a left partial nephrectomy. Why so not choice do both? one at the same time? Yeah, why not do both at the same time? Um, I just think it's a lot for the patient to handle at, at, at having it both at the same time. If you have the, the contralateral kidney, the left kidney still in, in situ, too, then you can uh, hope that postoperatively he'll recover faster than if you took him both kidneys out and put him on dialysis or renal replacement therapy. Jose, do you agree with that? Um, I would choose number one, too, but I th I think on the left side, we should definitely try to do a partial nephrectomy, but the, what Dr. Chapin mentioned is dialysis, uh, temporary dialysis in case you do a partial nephrectomy and you've lost kidney function on the same day from the right side. But I agree with Dr. Chapin, I would do a right nephrectomy first because of the higher risk of metastasis or spread from the right side. And then uh, about six to eight weeks later, follow that with a left partial nephrectomy. Scott, what do you think? Um, I, I we talk about this a lot, and I, I don't think there's the right answer here. I, actually, what I would do would be an open left partial nephrectomy first, because that right kidney, if the right kidney was entirely tumor, when you look at the coronals, there's actually some normal parenchyma, a little bit at the top and the bottom. So I'd do the big open left partial nephrectomy, uh, salvage, that, salvage that kidney, and then have my right kidney there to, I know it's got a large tumor in it, but have the right kidney there to back me up as the patient recovers. Uh, and within eight weeks, I'm going to be taking out the right kidney. So within eight weeks, he's going to get both of them treated. Would anyone consider biopsy? Would that help in any way? I don't think it's going to change the management in, uh, whatsoever. Okay. Not unless it's a protocol. Right. right unless you're going to put them on clinical Bizarre, trial. And Michael, do you want to comment on the role of targeted therapy in this setting? Would anyone consider giving this patient targeted therapy to try and shrink the tumors or eliminate metastatic disease or... In the absence of metastatic disease, I do not recommend systemic therapy up front, uh, only if the patient has metastasis or if after surgery the patient uh, uh, develops recurrence. I think uh, a comment to be made here, this is a patient with three uh, f f bloodlines uh, have an RCC. One has to consider this being an inherited syndrome, so bilaterality father, mother, and brother had renal cell carcinoma. I think he needs to be evaluated uh, at the genetics uh, clinic to rule out uh, this being a, a VHL disease, uh, VHL, you know, von Hippel-Lindau inherited syndrome. Um, uh, in terms of approaches, uh, I agree. I think the one that's most threatening is the right side, so one would uh, take care of that first and then the left partial, although there are uh, surgeons, urologists, but, uh, you know, at the Mayo Clinic who have done or still advocate doing uh, both surgeries at the same time. Yeah, I think, I think conventional wisdom in urology is to 
do stage procedures, and then it becomes a, a, a real uh, controversy in terms of how you stage it. So, you know, both of the both of the arguments are valid. On the right side, there's a locally advanced tumor. You worry about it metastasizing, but on the left side, there's a fairly large tumor that's not going to be a chip shot partial, and you're concerned that if you take out the right kidney and then do the left kidney, that if the left kidney goes into shutdown, the patient ends up on dialysis. Conversely, you could do a partial nephrectomy on the left side, but if they have a complication or something that delays their subsequent surgery, they could metastasize on the right side. So you can see it's not no easy answers and, and can sometimes be really challenging to make those decisions. Well, ultimately, I can tell you that the patient, sorry, the patient underwent a left partial nephrectomy. It turned out to be a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, T1B, and then a right radical nephrectomy. It turned out to be a T3A uh, meaning it was invading into the renal sinus and the perinephric fat, clear cell renal cell carcinoma grade 3. So then, Michael or uh, Nazar, would you like to comment on the role of adjuvant therapy, meaning that after completing these two surgeries, the patient comes to you and says, you know, my father died of kidney cancer. Is there any medicine that you can give me that can make sure that I don't die of kidney cancer? Sure, I can, I can take that one. Um, so my answer to the patient would be off of a protocol, there's really no role for adjuvant therapy. Now, this patient is high risk, and we know that we have lots of active targeted therapies. We have seven FDA-approved agents, you know, in the last six, seven years now. So we know that we have active agents, but it's really not clear off of, a, off of a protocol what the role of that is. So I would encourage that patient, if they were eligible, to enroll on a, on a clinical trial protocol that was appropriate. And the clinical, do you, the, do you know the clinical trials that are available currently in the United States? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are several that are in the past several years. Um, I'm not sure what you all hear, have here. We have a PROTECT study have protect. that's looking at adjuvant pezopinib. Um, there has been a SURE that's looked at sunitinib or serafinib. There's been S-TRAC. There's been all, all different ones, uh, Everest, looking at Everolimus. Yeah, the two currently open trials in the United States are the Everest trial, which is sponsored by SWOG, which has randomizes patients to Everolimus versus placebo, and then the PROTECT trial, which is sponsored by GSK, and randomizes patients to pozopinib versus placebo. Well, the uh, question, uh, the one, there is one adjuvant study that has shown to be a benefit, and it's never been replicated. It was a tumor-derived vaccine from Germany. So would you have enrolled this gentleman on a vaccine trial before you took out his kidney? Um, if one existed, but as you're well aware, that there's controversy surrounding that study because the intent to treat analysis was negative. It was only when they looked at patients who actually got the vaccine and the trial was empowered to, to show that. But you're right, there is, a, there is a vaccine preparation in Germany that potentially could decrease the risk of recurrence, but I don't think that's going anywhere as, as I understand it. Uh, just to comment on the concept of uh, randomized, so when we say randomized, basically we randomly choose there is a certain computerized process that tells us if the patient's going to take the medication or the placebo, or otherwise known as a sugar pill, for example. So we, the doctor or the patient, we don't choose what medication the patient's going to receive. So the patient needs to know that they could be on a non-active medication or on the active medication, and it's completely random process. 